Okay, good afternoon and welcome to Advanced Painting. And this afternoon we are going to assess the work submitted for the Still Life Composition Assignment. And uh, we're just going to roll it out. It was submitted in the, um, on the stream. So Onessa would have been the last person, late comer, who would have submitted. So we're going to start with hers. Roberta, feel free at any time to make any contribution or any suggestion okay. and ask any question along the way. Okay? Okay. Same goes to you as well, um, Onessa. All right? Okay, sir. So what you're going to do, Onessa, you're going to, usually I would start the session, but what you're going to do, I'm going to go through each one of the sketches that you would have submitted, each one of the, the pieces that you would have submitted. And then I'm going to let you um, talk a little bit about it, and then we'll assess it from there. All right? That's good? Yes, sir. When, yes, you're ready sir. To me to, when you're ready for me to move on, just let me know, and I'll, I'll move on to the next um, photograph. Okay, sir. All right, good. Take it away. So um, this is the first stage of the painting where I usually just use um a mixture of blue and brown to create that kind of dark color to do the sketches of the painting. And that is just the layout of where I want each object to be in the painting. You can move on, sir. Yeah, this is, I think this is the second stage or the third stage where I just like fill in the blocks and basically out of some basic colors on the painting. Not showing much light in there, just filling in the blocks and basic colors. Uh, and what's the reason, what's, what's, what's the rationale behind um, approaching it in that way at this, at this, at this stage? Excuse me, sir? What is the rationale behind approaching it in that way at this particular stage of the painting? Um, I think it's because I didn't want to rush anything and I didn't want to go into details um, so early. So just like the basic layout and into getting things in places and not just rushing the process. Okay. Ready for the next piece? Yes, sir. I think this piece, this is the same thing as the second one. I think, yeah. It's just like adding, adding in more layers and basic colors, like the foundation part of the painting. That one and the second one is the same. Um, I think the, at this stage is where oh, I you begin still to get another... a bit more. Excuse me, sir? Which one is the final one? This is the final one. It's not or a is, final is another... piece. This is the final part of the progress. Okay. This was taken last night. And this is as far as I've gotten so far. It's not the complete part of the painting. This is the progress, the final part of the progress. And this is where I'm beginning to get a little more technical and showing more lights and darks and a little bit of form. No details or anything, just the basic form and begin to get more technical with the lights and darks. And in the selection of your, your color scheme, what would have guided you, what would have guided your approach in terms of your color scheme? Well, from when, when I heard about still life, I know from the inception, I wanted to work with something more on the fruit side and nothing too complicated. So I just wanted to focus more on colors and tones and contrast. So I decided to go with a complementary color scheme, which is basically with more um, greens and reds. Just basically focusing on colors and tones. So that's it? Yes, sir. Roberto, what do you think? Um. You hearing me? Yes, yeah. yes, I'm hearing you. Yeah, I think you started off well with the um, like taking it step by step, like yeah. blocking out the colors. I think it's a good idea to do that. Um, 
I think it's coming along well so far for the I think the glass the glass is in the foreground and it looks like it needs more work. It doesn't really look like glass yet, but I know that's more of a, de- a finishing thing than yeah. anything. Yeah. It's just like the basic layout and where it's supposed yeah. to be and like a little bit of form. Yeah. So at this point you should be able to recognize that it is glass. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Okay, um, let's take it back from the top and look at what you would have had. In terms of the, the, um, the videos that would have been sent to you, what are some of the points that you would have taken from those videos that you would have incorporated or that you wanted to specifically focus on in this particular still life composition? You can ask me to go to whichever piece that you want to use to uh, make your point. Well, sir, um, well, let's start with the composition, right? So I'd use the triangular type of composition in which they said it's a more common composition used by all artists. I've checked a couple, a few, a lot of works online, actually. And indeed, it's one of the type of composition that, I'm see, that I've seen most because it said it creates a sense of weight and stability. And then you said... Um, I had problems with the lighting and how I'm setting it up. So I did a bit of research on that and um it's now. Yeah. I have a question, sir. Pertaining to um the natural light. Is it more good to use when doing still life painting? Yes, sir. Are you hearing me? No, I wasn't hearing you. Um, yeah, what, what I was saying is that um, it depends on the, the context in which you, you're you using the uh, the setup and what time of the day. Because let's say if it's in the morning when the light is, when, when the sun is rising and you're at yeah. a window where the, you can be able to control the sunlight, direct sunlight into the, the room that you're setting up the composition in then it's going to work best because you have a lot more control of the light. But if it's midday, then you're not going to have a whole lot of that because you're not going to have the direct light coming through the window. You just have the, 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 the light because of how it's um, thing in the environment coming through your window. And if it's, it's, it's setting in the afternoon and you're on that side, the window's on that, the setting side of the sun, then you can also control it in that way. But when you don't have those control mechanisms in place, I would say the artificial light would be best because essentially what you want, you want to be able to control how light strike your object so that you can be able to dictate what kind of effect you have or what kind of effect you want to create with your objects in a still life composition. So it depends on context. And either way, it depends on how you use it. One can work for you depending on the context that you're using it in. Okay. Yes, yeah. Continue. Yes. So um, a few things of taking into consideration when doing still life painting is to um, pretend to the lighting again. You always have to keep it at a forty degree angle. 
and I've, I've been focusing like on the objects like the objects in the background the objects in the middle ground and the objects in the foreground and to also have a focal point yes sir What I like about your initial um, setup is the way you would have gone about working directly with the brush. I think there's a certain spontaneousness that comes with using that approach. And um, having that light on the painting gray kind of wash in the background is also working well. And as I zoom in there, I can see you would have used some amount of grafting stuff. All right yes sir so in terms of the initial stages um it's good to see that you would have, have you would have laid out everything that is needs to be a part of a composition and have it there what i don't like though in terms of this is is the way you treat the the ellipse for the two glass you know i don't know if that was yes, deliberate sir. and i don't know if, the, if this is one of those um fancy glasses with the on the the surface and let's let's because i know you would have sent me i don't think i have any of that here anyway i thought i had an example of a photograph but i don't have it here yet <clears throat> so in, in doing that you, you got to pay attention you have to make a, 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 a deliberate artistic decision to decide whether you're going to pay keen attention to that or you're going to modify certain things because remember you always have the license to, to change things around but if you're going to change things wrong you have to be definite not too sure i i, I kind of like with the way you treated these two glasses almost like they're afterthought and i think what is dangerous about that in the initial stages is that even though you've saved it a little bit there you see it you still tend to get that mindset like you know they're not all that important in terms of that and i think roberto spoke about that um initially when i asked him to yeah he spoke about the glass got to make sure that decisions like that uh, are very clear to you so it guides you along the way so every step of the way you must be very strategic in your planning in terms of what sense and i hear you clear sir no, I was saying that what you want to do, you want to make sure that you you're very in your planning. Which part you didn't hear? Because I said a whole lot just now. The last set of things you said. Me? The last part. Heard yeah, yeah, I said you need to be strategic in your planning because what tends to happen in the in, and be very sketchy about to the final composition and i was talking about the way you treated the glass especially in the last one is almost no different from what you would have had here and i'm saying that when you're laying out in the first instance space all right and in the future please ensure you Are you hearing me? No, sir. Are you hearing me, Roberto? It's cutting off and coming on. Like, ah, it's that might be, um, that might be a G that might be a GTNT issue. To be able to alleviate that and see what happens. Yeah, so we are in the second stage. And um Usually, this is a stage where you, and unless in, in future, as a pay attention to your photographing of the work. Okay? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. If you look at this piece, I would have cut out a all of this here because it doesn't really take away that much from the composition because you're still seeing some stuff 
to shining through the background and that's distracting if you look at that piece you see the difference because essentially in you in you presenting the work you're presenting the work for assessment and you want to present the work in its best possible going on it kind of takes away from it so be very very great from now on when you're taking out photographs to submit for assessment to ensure it's there and it's done properly okay yes sir good so at this stage I can I can see how you're you're progressing where you're laying things out you're you're setting things out and this seemed to be the the L shape um, format of the composition that was discussed in one of the videos am I correct that's the yes, one sir. you would have focused on yes sir because you see so where is your focal point so your focal point or where where, where what part of the composition are you going to turn into your focal point the really? grapes the bowl um, that contains the, the grapes the grape. yeah. And, and when you, I'm assuming you would have looked at the rule of third and you understand the rule of thirds as well, right? Yes, sir. So when you line up, your, because if, if I, and if I go one, and if I go two, and if I go three, four, because that's how they say you graph up the rule of third, right? So, yes, sir. And in the rule of third, and I'm, uh, I'm, I, you have to excuse me because I don't have my, my um, line tool. Otherwise, I've been able to put the lines there. But in the rule of thirds, it is saying that the key points will be the intersecting points of the lines. So one of, one of those intersections is going to be here. One of those intersections is going to be here. Another one is going to be here. One going to be here. And one going to be, yeah, somewhere around there. Right around here. So if I'm looking at it, based on how they talk about the rule of third then that bowl is not one of those key points you see where i'm from yes sir so you got to go back and double check the line be using a grape you might have to use something else in the place of the grape You're gonna have to use something else in the place of the grape for that focal point. Because based on what we are seeing there, and I'm gonna pull up a photograph of the ruler so you can see. Um, you see those examples of the rule of thirds? It's loading. And if you look at this one, for example, when when you when you see it, let me know, please. Yeah, it's up. Good. Now, what the rule of third states: the the area of this is these are the key points. The intersection that's one, two, three, four. And if you were to if you were to spread that over on the year um, painting, you will clearly see that your grape your bowl of grapes somewhere around in the center here. And that's not the most ideal of points for a focal point in terms of what you're saying. And if you look at this one here, this one is more clear. You see where the highlighted like spots are? Loaded? No, sir. Probably a little slow coming to your end. Let me know when, when, when you get it. Yeah. Good. You see where those spots are? Yes, sir. Those are the. Um, those that's where you put your focal points or your your object or that part of the painting that you want to be in focus and and any one of these four areas so that when you're looking at your your composition or you're going to have to go back and if you look at another example you can clearly see you're going to have to go back and you're going to have to double you're going to have to rethink that bowl of grapes because based on what i'm seeing when i line up yours the bowl of grapes is not going to be the best one to use as the focal point if we are following the advisory rule of thirds. And for now, I want us to be able to do this. Can you break the rules? Yes, you can. But what I want you to do, I want you to have an understanding of the rules and know exactly why you use what 
before you start breaking it. So you can't break the rules unless you know the rules. You with me? True. Yes, sir. Good. So we're going to go back to the um, the work itself. Yeah, so as I was, I was saying, definitely when you line that up, let me go back to the last one, you will see that yours is not going to be because if you say one, it's going to be something, one there, one here, one here, and one here. So more than likely, your focal point is either going to have to be, are you seeing it now? Are you seeing the um, reference on the um, screen? Yes, sir. Good. Your focal point is going to have to be if you follow the rules because it's going to be this one here, this mm -hmm. one here, that one here, this one. It's going to have to be one of these either the apple, the glass, or the bottle, but definitely not a grape because the grape is going to fall away. The bowl of grape is going to fall away from that key point. So you're going to have to reconsider that. Okay. Yes, sir. A couple other things that I like. I like the way you, um, you're working your darks, but I still feel you can introduce some reds into your darks. But like you said, it's not finished. But pay attention to that. Pay attention to that when you're working your shadows as well. And I, you, you need to give some respect to that glass, those two glass. Not in terms of detail, but in terms of capturing that textural quality. Because we want to know the difference between the textural qualities of the objects. The two, the three glass objects, which, which is the two glass and the the bottle and then yes the, the glass the two glasses in front of the bottle excuse me sir mm -hmm. the two glasses in the bottle is way more textured than the the bottle than the glass bottle the glasses are textured while the bottle is like a smooth kind of surface something well you're gonna have to show us that in in in, in the final piece and show you pay attention to that when you're working in the the, the final piece okay yes sir yes sir and I'm gonna need you to look at bouncing off some of those greens because that green is very that green fabric is very dominant, and it's definitely gonna reflect back onto some of the objects, especially the bottle. You're gonna need to have some of that on the bottle. You're gonna need some to have some of that on the apple as well, I think, and and the grape. Little accentuating colors in in in, the, in different areas because that green is too is too dominant not to be affecting the other objects in the composition. And I'm not seeing any hints of that on these objects, the apple, the grape, and the bottle. Well, the, the glass is, is transparent, so it's obviously going to uh, show that as we wrap up that, you pay attention to those kind of factors, all right? Okay, sir. Thank you. Anything that I would have missed that you want to add, Roberto? Uh, no, not really. Mostly it was... Um, I was noticing in the early stages the wine bottle wasn't constructed well, but I'm looking at this piece and it's fixed in terms okay. of the symmetry of the bottle. Yeah, it was. <laughs> okay. I see Minerva's here. Welcome, Minerva. I see Antini's here as well, but it's saying Antini device is not connected. Minerva, can you hear us? Yes, welcome. Yeah. Is there anything that you, you would have seen that you want to add that um, to what we would have just said? I'm I'm seeing the size of the grape. Is that a grape on the yeah. apple? It, it looks kind of like the same size. Yeah, yeah. No, no, now that you draw that to my attention, yeah, that that that's a that's a that's yeah. an over, oversized grip, um, Vanessa. In terms of and and when you look at it, yeah, that's that that grip is large. Comparatively speaking, a grip is gonna fit into an apple like what four times? There was some large one included in the bunch. Trust me, it had some large ones. Large enough to 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 rival the apple in terms of its shape. Which ones are the grapes? The ones in the bowl or the one on the left? No, no the one on the left. That's a no, grape? That's, 
this is not that's not an apple it's a it's not a grape it's an apple but it's like a very like a purple kind of red something that's apple yeah it is <laughs> well i i i thought that was a grape no it's not but a grape it's an apple it's a gotta, very you dark back, you gotta look back at the construction of that apple because and, and and that's one of the beauties of having so many eyes on the live stream at once because yeah things i'm not gonna be able to see everything that so forget about that yes but sir. your eagle eyed colleagues will be able to see things <laughs> and um whenever i want to thank you for that contribution because it definitely that's something that you're going to need to go back and look at that for sure because in terms of size the size the relationship between the objects you're going to need to correct that because i thought it was a grape okay sir and something something wrong with that apple then that that's what that's one of malnourished apple or something So pay pay attention to those little things that we'd have discussed as you work on wrapping up. So I want to thank you for your submission. I'm looking forward to see what the final composition is going to be like. Please then show you double check. You do your own critical assessment. Anything you're not clear on, feel free to ask me or ask anyone on the stream. Because as you can see, if we work together as a group, we'll be able to do a whole lot more as a yes, group. Sir. So I want to thank you for your submission. So we're going to move on now to Roberto's submission. And we'll take it from there. So when you're ready, Roberto, come and talk to us. And then we'll take it from there. Yes, Roberto. You might have to go to the um the first post because okay. this is just the finished piece. Gotcha. The almost finished piece. There we go. Are you seeing it? Yeah. Good. So um, this composition, I posted a photo of it um, earlier. What really happened is I set up the composition before I really looked at most of the videos. So in this piece, I actually changed around the objects, but the lighting was still like it. I could still work the lighting with it. So for this part, I worked with I, I primed the canvas with gray instead of white which I, I usually use white but i decided to use gray because as you'll see later i wanted to focus on the values before i went into the color so i just sketched out the um composition with paint with um a wash a diluted burnt umber and where well, i constructed the objects and added some tones in terms of the, the um point of view of this one i wanted the objects to be almost at eye level instead because with most still lives you would usually see them from like above like you're above the composition but i want it to be like uh almost like if a child was looking at a table or something so you're like at eye level with the objects you could go on to the next okay because remember when i would have made the first assessment of your own? move on to the other one remember when, when when i made the first assessment when you submitted this set of pieces i was looking at this looked at this and that's that one of the reasons why i was so vague when i described um when i was assessing it because i wasn't sure what it was yeah it's it's not or the, some um, kind of rectangular it's, object yeah because it's like this, line almost... here, this line was suggesting to me yeah yeah, like that there was a thicker side almost like it was as it was similar to this, yeah. but a little thinner. And that's why I was a bit confused. But when you showed me the photograph and then you explained it, I, I was able to I was able to appreciate where you were coming from. And I think in as we move forward in the future, whenever we you're, you're gonna submit these kind of um work, submit the references because when once I'm doing it without a reference, sometimes I'm just shooting in the dark because okay. I'm not sure what you're doing, and I don't want to be to be very critical about your work with something that I'm not 100% about. And I think in that first instance, I had to be that vague because to me, it looked like a, a, a rectangular shape that is similar to this. But then yeah. when you moved on to the other one, that disappeared. But I got to appreciate what you were doing when I saw the photograph. So continue. Thank you for that. Yeah. So here um, I'm continuing with focusing on the values. In one of the videos I watched, uh, 
they mentioned that usually when we're painting a piece, we would combine the steps of applying values and colors. And when you really think about it, that's really what we're doing. But if you separate the steps in terms of like doing the values first and then moving on to color, it gives you a chance to focus on each step independently so you can really think about it. So that's what I was trying to do. Well, not trying, I did it here. And um, I think it. I like the effects of it. I don't usually do this, but I would definitely apply it more into other pieces that I'm doing. So you could move on to the next one. Yeah, so at this point, um, I was starting to apply the colors and deciding on like what how I wanted the brush strokes to be. So I, from the previous assignment we did um, on color, the study on color, I tried to apply some of those, the, those um, principles into this one by using like cool colors to recede in receding areas and warmer colors in the more, the, color, the parts that I want to bring attention to. So that's why I chose this bluish green background. Okay. And um, I'm still feeling the brushes. I don't know about too much. I don't really love the background yet, but um, it's at the point where I can work with the foreground and then maybe come back to the background later. Because I have like something down so I can move on. You could go on to the next one. Okay. Now, as, as, as I go to the other one, one of the things that you, you spoke about is, is, is the fact that you were able to experiment or explore some new approaches to painting. How different is your level of confidence and assuredness in the painting process now that you have been able to have additional information that you can consciously apply to the process of painting? How, how, how do you find that? And, and um, how do you move forward with, with that kind of information? Um, it's very different in terms of painting. Um, usually with a still life, you would see people like almost drawing the composition fully with a pencil and then covering it in paint. And with like, with more experience and more a better understanding of the process, like for example, just starting drawing with the brush and then knowing where to go from there, like building the work, it's a lot more enjoyable for one. And like, you feel like you know where you're headed. You're not just guessing along the way, if that makes sense. Okay, and what 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 about the um, the the influence of the the information that you have gathered from the color theories and um, color schemes and theories that would have been we discussed in the prior um, video? How, how did that impact you in any way that you think? Well, okay, here's something that I, I I wasn't aware of before that I have now that I can use to really make my work stronger. Yeah, like I said when I was discussing the um the color theory thing, I would notice these the use of color in a lot of other paintings. Like they would use colors really well and it would create a really interesting piece. But I usually found it difficult to really apply those things because when you really look at something, like if you just glance at something, you wouldn't see those colors. But you have to kind of look at them and add to what's there, kind of exaggerate what's there. And that creates that painterly... Um, more lively effect. And so like through the use of using complementary colors and shadows and and um, cool light and warm light and those things, it, it creates a more interesting composition. And I'm not like completely confident in it so far, but I'm definitely trying working to apply it more into other pieces. So I still have to do some more of that on this piece, but I understand it enough that I can apply it into here and work on it. The reason I would have asked that because one of the things that I know um, most students tend to, well, the, the end student do is to look at the masters or look at a particular painter or painting that they like and they just copy the style, understanding the theoretical concept of a piece of work. And I'm, I'm happy that you have been able to see how it is to understand things from a technical point of view. So when you start to paint, you're not really painting by guess or you're just painting by...
And then Harry, you on the internet? Lost all my connection there. Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm hearing you now. Yeah, I, I we, we had a little connection issue there. So what you're gonna have to do, you're gonna have to take that back. Cause I, I was saying before, I'm not sure when you lost me, but I said that um, one of the things, one of the reasons why I asked the question I asked just now is because what the typical student would do is that they would, um, they will see the work of a master or, or study a period of, of, of work and they like how they use scholars and they just they just copy stuff without understanding the, the theoretical concepts that that would have gone into the production of that piece of work and what i appreciate from what you would have just said is that you would have got gathered some new information and those new information would have brought refreshing and new insight that would have allowed you to see things differently and to do things with a little more assuredness and understanding why some of the works that you would have seen would have been executed in the way they would have been executed. So that is something I hope that your colleagues would have listened to and your colleagues would have paid note to so that they can also use the same thing. And I'm pretty sure that they would have um, experienced some of the same things, but I just wanted to emphasize that now rather than let the point move and then we don't get to talk about it. All right? Okay. So continue. Yeah, um, we can move on to this. Well, this, this is the... Um, the farthest I've come with the piece so far. And like you mentioned mm -hmm. in the um, area between the coconuts where they're intersecting, I was having some difficulties with showing the spatial relations, like the distance between them. I think mm -hmm. it's because the full, the round coconut there, it's uh, because it's round, like a part of it is at the back and a part of it is at the front. So I was having some trouble with like showing that in that dark area. But I think if I use some cool colors in there to kind of separate them, it would be beneficial. Because right now, it's not clear where one, like, you know, where they start and where they end. They look kind of merged there to me. So I need to, without using very dark colors, I think I can use cool colors there to add some depth without losing dimension. I, th I think this is where your understanding of the, the mixing of grays can come into really strong play when you look at that. Because um, I'm happy that you're recognizing that because you see what tends to happen. This is where those additional technical information about color mixing and color scheme and color theories will really, really assist you to, 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 to make your work stand out because little things like that, you can go back to those, those concepts and then you could see how it's going to work for you. You can experiment with it and see how it works for you and whether it did get the effect that you really want. But definitely, yeah, you were struggling with some of those spatial issues. And one of the things that I was looking at, if you go back, you're seeing the original reference, right? Yeah. I was looking at the way you treated the dark area on the, the block. and or the, It looked like a masala brick now, now, now that I'm looking at it, is it? Yeah, that's what it is. Okay, yeah, so one of the things that I was, uh, I was looking at is the way you would have treated this area, but like you said, you still got another area, another, um, some more work to do for the final piece. But when you're working that masala brick in your painting, you're gonna have to pay attention to this because what happens, this line here or that dark value there really makes it real. 
And I don't know if when you were doing your sketch, if you did zooming in on your objects or the picture, did you? Uh, yeah, I did, but I don't know if. Because sometimes when you zoom in, you tend to see, like, for example, around this area here, there's some interesting values and colors up in there that you can really work into the final compositions and really take it <clears throat> to another level. And that sees you to work with some of those issues that I see that you're struggling with. The one thing that I'm, I was looking at as I was looking at it in preparation for this afternoon class is these highlights. See these highlights on these two repepper? Yeah, I know they're pure white, but those from the, uh, the value part, I didn't um, go over them. No, well, I, I wasn't looking at it from, from the, the, the fact that it's actually white, you know. I was looking at it in terms of its strength comparing to other highlights in, on the other objects in the composition. And when you look at them, it's like they're almost the same. Because when you squint, you see what's happening there? It's almost like yeah. all those highlights are the same. So you're going to have to ensure that when you start working those in the final composition, we can see the contrast. We can see the contrast between the objects that is in front mm -hmm. and the one that's at the back. Because, and the reason why I emphasize that you exaggerate spatial relationship and you turn inches into probably in, in, into, in, in, into feet is because you're dealing with a two-dimensional sort of um, with, with a two-dimensional situation, and you're trying to you're, you're striving to create the illusion of three-dimensionality. And if you're going to do that creating space, then you're going to have to see how values work to do that. And therefore, from an artistic point of view, you're going to have to manipulate nature a little bit to work for you. So the viewers will not know that you were thinking instead of two inches, you're thinking two feet. But the way you would have utilized your values to allow you to show the two feet difference between, let's say, the weary pepper and the garlic, is, is going to be good enough for them to know that the weary prep is closer to you, not just because of where it's placed, but also on how you use the values of the colors that are on it. And that is something that you're going to have to pay extra attention to as you wrap up the, the, the composition. All right? Okay. Yeah, okay. So that's what I want to leave with you. I don't know if there's anything Minerva and Onessa and I see and Tini's here, but I'm not sure if he'd be able to make any contribution because his device is not really showing the speaker. But Minerva and Onessa, is there anything that we would have made that you want to add to assist Roberto along the way? Uh, no, sir. No, sir. It's like you've highlighted much, um, most of the things. Yeah, almost all of them. Hmm. Okay, so thank you, Roberto, okay, for your yeah. contribution, and thank you for being here. And then we're going to move on to Minerva. This is going to redirect us. I'm going to have to pull up the stream and re... Okay, Minerva, the floor is yours. Okay, so for this piece, for this for this piece, I wanted to go in and do the sketch with the most dominant color in the composition, which is that brown that kind of ginger brown that you're seeing there so after doing the sketch yeah so this is the sketch mm -hmm. now after doing the sketch i had wanted i i since i noticed that i'm working with transparency i wanted to do the background and then do the object that is in the foreground. Sarah, can you please go to the next picture? Yes. 
So here, as you can see, I started off with the background, uh, placing the values, going in with the darks and some of the light tones. But this is what, but with this piece, I mix like grays and um, I didn't want to cover much of the objects that you're seeing there, but I didn't put in the petals because they were like details that I'd wanted to get in under the petals. So I'd wanted to work with a flat background and then fill in the details. Sir, can you please go to the next? So here I started to create depth using lighter and darker tones. And I've still not touched the vase yet, but I, I've added like a lot of background colors that I know would have to show through the vase. So I didn't want to go on and then come back and put in the background colors in there. So I went on creating the folds in the fabric to show depth using the much more darker and lighter tones. Sir, can you please go to the next? So here I started working with the rose in the vase and I use gray because I wanted to put an underlying tone. And since the rose is white, I'd wanted to use an underlying tone so that I could get the highlights, like the, the whitest of white, I would say. And using gray seems to me like a much more perfect, well, a much more better color to go in with. And I've noticed that uh, during the study that the gray seems to kind of solidi solidify the work that you were doing. So yeah, I went off with using the grays and then working to get the lights in. And, and what system did you use to mix those grays? Did you go with the traditional black and white? Or did you follow the, the information from the, the video that we that would, would have been sent with the, um, the previous assignment? No, I did not use the black and white to get it. I, I use mostly like, it's mostly like a blue gray that I use. OK. And on to the next picture. So for this one, I started to work in the values on the flower and um, work much more on the leaves. And also in this part, I started putting some more values on the vase. And also I work with the petals and I, I've noticed that I'll have some of the dominant color, which is the brown reflecting on the white petals. So I did not use that harsh tone on the white petals. I just use a light tone because it's, I noticed that when things are transferred by light onto white, it's much more lighter than it appears to be. So yeah, I use this um, composition. I choose this composition because I wanted to challenge myself to work with transparency and also something much more simple to, which allows me to focus on the main idea of the painting. So is that the, 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 the flower stuffed in a vase under the water there? Yes. We gonna come to that. I got a question for that at the last section, but I'm waiting for you to finish the last thing. So, yes. Yeah, so for this piece, I also studied um this artist, 
Annie. And the way she worked her values with the rose, it I was I was like wowed by the way she got she had so much values and also the way she used the whites for the highlight, but I did not go in with like a massive pure white. I add like blues to the white. And this is where I started putting in the highlights, but I wasn't really sure about the transparency. I It was like, I've noticed that it wasn't showing up the way I wanted it to. It's like the harsh tone, well, the smoothness of the vase against the folds of the fabric and the petals, these three types of texture, it was kind of clashing. So I stopped and I wanted to look at the work to see where I'm going wrong so I could continue. Yes, so this piece was a little bit challenging and I'm still working on the transparency and getting my values in. That's it, sir. Onessa and Roberto, can you, is there anything that you want to, that you notice that you want to talk about, any contribution that you want to make? Oh, um, one thing, Minerva, you said that on the, um, the petals on the, like the loose petals, you said that the brown reflected off of them. But yeah, for the for the, the entire rose in the vase, I don't see I don't really see any of, of those browns reflecting off of that one. Yeah, yeah, there's one other point I wanted to talk about also the reflection of the browns on the rose. I did not work much with the values in the vase because I wasn't sure about you know the work that I was doing. I wanted to look at it and then continue working. Okay. So this is where I stop. Yeah, those are some good points because one of the things I was looking at is, and of course, just before I make my point, the, the visual format is a nice idea, but as you can see, if we had the, the, the pictures, so you can always submit the visual and pictures at the same time, we could have mm -hmm. been able to zoom in and see what is happening there on a very close level, but we, we can only zoom as far as the video is gonna allow us to zoom at the moment. So we ain't got a benefit of that. But you see the thing with, when, you, when you're working with, um, with transparent objects, like, like rear glass and that kind of stuff, you, you have to understand selectivity and simplicity because some things you don't, you don't pay attention to. You just look for those things that would be enough to create the illusion of glass and transparency. That you're gonna have um, awareness that you must have as you work with this particular subject matter because it's different from the others, right? Yeah. The other thing that you're gonna have to look at too, I'm looking at the petals that are outside on the, on the fabric and of course, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking space. I'm looking at the spatial relationship. Yes, I can see which, which set is in front. I know which one is closest to me. But then what I want to know are the values that you're using in terms of the colors and the intensity of the colors. Are they saying the same language as the position of the petals? It's a question that you would have to ask. Because remember, as much as there's a, a symbolic nature to what you're doing here, you also pay attention to some of the 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 the, the real still must play a part in your in your role composition and the sending of the message and i will want to say if you take a look at your petals you need to ensure that you pay attention to the spatial relationship of those petals moving forward as you as you as you wrap up in terms of and value. also the same thing is going to be yes in terms of value and the same thing you must all into for the the fabric that the the stuff is resting on because I be, we want to see that spatial relationship between things because i'm thinking the distance between these group of petal this group of petal and where this fold starts there's a, some some amount of distance that you move your hands are wrong 
and go around the vase. And we must be able to see that that is the case based on how you use your values, right? So as you work yeah. towards the completion, ensure you're paying attention to those little things because that's going to really take it to a different level when we can actually feel as though we can walk into the composition and move wrong different parts of the composition. That's going to be very important for you to um, pay attention to. And and why why unworthy and why the stuff, as I would have just said, stuffed into the glass, into the jar or the vase? Okay, so um, it's a little bit funny, but uh, when I was setting up the composition, I knew what I wanted to do, uh, but I wanted to try something different, like something that you won't usually see. Like who puts a flower upside down into a vase? So I had it up and then I just turned it upside down. And then the white flower, in a research, I found that it, when it's turned upside down, it symbolizes the opposite of everything it stands for. So that just went back with the title that I choose. Um, holy. I, I often like to, to draw the parallel between your reading, interesting, and researching of information and how it influences the production of your piece because very often or too often, students tend to ignore the importance of background information, the importance of, 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 of reading, the importance of knowing about what you're dealing with and just going to do things just for doing its sake, just because, oh, I got to paint, I still like painting the paint, let me just paint it. But it's something that, that I want you as a group to continue to take seriously. Do your reading, do your research on every aspect of your work, because what it does, it takes your work to a different level. And when you have to stand and speak, or you have to stand and defend, or you have to interact with the public, these are the kind of information is that, that, that's going to take your work to a different level and these are the kind of, of of discussions and this is the kind of information that the public is going to appreciate and look at you in a different light because by and large if you if you produce a beautiful piece of painting and you really can't talk about it or defend it you takes away from it and um paying attention to the importance of the theoretical aspect of your subject is very important so i want to commend you in doing that and i'm looking forward to see what the final composition is going to be like and how you're going to put all we would have discussed some of the things that we would have highlighted to see how the finished composition is going to be. So I thank you for your time, Minerva, and thank you for being here. And we're going to move on to the next piece. Okay, sir. So Antin is here. So hopefully he's going to hear. But um, So we go to Antini and hopefully we'll be able to make notes as we, go, as we go along and discuss. And then we'll, I think there's one where Ms. Boville would have submitted her piece as well. So we discuss hers and then we'll wrap up. So where's Antini? Here. So these are the pieces submitted by Antini. And just looking at them, I mean, I don't think there's much that we could we could um, look at. We can look at composition. We can look at initial construction. But because there's not a, even though there are three pieces, I think that there still should have been another layer. After this particular stage, we could have seen some more detail being worked in, in terms of uh, light and dark, in terms of the, the, the local color, so to speak, of the, the objects that are part of the composition. So, Antini, if you're here, um, you can just type in the chat section to let me know if you're hearing what we're saying. One of the things you're going to have to do when you're submitting progress pieces in the future is to ensure that the three pieces or the four pieces that you're going to submit, they're all different in terms of developmental stages. 
and we see something different from in each stage so that we can really as a group work and build on it and i'm noticing that you're doing the graphing stuff too in terms of your composition i like the way your your fabric is leading the eyes um again i'm not sure how much you would have paid attention to the rule of third looking at it but that's something that i would urge you to ensure that you pay attention to and again something that i'm always talking about when you're submitting them work is you're going out with the background it's distracting so we're not able to focus on the and the work take the time to use one of the photo editing arm software and just crop out the background so that we get the, the 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 pure essence of the work itself and don't have to deal with all the distraction that's happening at the back it seems to me that you're working with a complementary scheme i could be wrong again send that in the chat so we can know if you're hearing or not but for the um there's as much that i could say about this for now because of the, the because of the fact that they're basically almost like three of the same thing so we can't really take this to task critically i don't know if there's anything that i would have missed that the others want to talk about or want to make a contribution for antini so that he can um Make a note of that as he move forward towards the conclusion. So, Roberto, Onessa, and Minerva, take it away when you're ready. Sir, I'd really uh, wanted to see much more progress in this piece. As for now, I can't really say much because I'm not seeing much. But I think he has to look at the intensity of his comments so far. That's all I can say. Okay, Onessa? Yes, sir. Um, looking at Anthony's piece, um, like Minerva said, the intensity of the color. I don't know if that's the actual color of the cloth. It's very bright. The intensity is very high. And um, also, you could see like right through the paint. And you could see the marks, the grid marks. I don't know if that is intentional or if he's going to cover it, but he should look at that also. Yes, sir, that is it. Roberto? Uh, I, I agree with what everyone is saying. I can't really make any judgment or critique of it so far because it's still in the beginning process. Um, yeah, that's it. I can't really say anything else. Okay, hopefully Anthony is here. Not if not, when he, when he look at the, the video, because I'm going to post the... the um, the finished stuff on stream you'll be able to make a note of that as you you progress so we're going to go to the final submission and um those that will be the contribution by miss Bovell, and then we will wrap up hold on let me see just bear me like why i find the exact thing because i think there are two sets These are the sketches submitted by Ms. Boville. So what I want you folks to do is to take a look at it. Oh, something went wrong there. And uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna leave this one up. Let me see if the other one is gonna load. And that's the other one. Did you were you able to see the uh, the three pieces? Everyone, 
Yeah, I'm seeing the pieces. Okay. I'm going to read a statement that that would have been that would have accompanied these pieces so at least we'd have an understanding of where she's coming from and then we'll we're going to talking about it in terms of what we think is working and what we think is not working what needs to be done to improve it. Said at aware of why I did a lot of thumbnail sketches but now I enjoy doing it because it helps me to see different avenues in my mind. Uses of composition, lighting, color, lines, texture, value, etc. Here are my studies for this life. And the first piece will be my final will be my final study for the painting on my board. So based on what she's saying, this is gonna be. What are your thoughts? Chime in when you're ready. What are your thoughts? Um, I think you could go to the colored pencil sketch. Hello? Yeah, yeah, there it is. You seeing it? Yeah, for this one, I think um, it's the strongest out of the um, the set because it's you can see uh, like values and you can actually identify the objects to a degree and you can see where the things are in a way. But in the other, like the the paint the paint sketches, it's hard to identify what the objects are and you can't really tell them apart from the background and from the from other objects and so on happy that you raised that point because one of the things that i i noticed was with with, with miss bovell's sketches and most of her work is that same point you see things but they are not clear enough for you to understand exactly what is going on and that is what's happening especially in this one because i'm looking at it and i'm i'm striving to figure out or i'm trying to figure out what are the objects what is going on i i think i, I can sense something like a bed but i don't know what is this and what and, and where it's going and the other thing that i'm, I'm wondering too is if the still life composition is set up in this way what is the message and also what i'm wondering if this is much more of a conceptual piece rather than a still life composition kind of piece because i i objects that are a part of the composition to be to be honest with you just like you this year yes you can pillows what is this i'm not sure and you can tell that this is looks like a, a piece of a, a, a half of an orange minus the rind and all that kind of stuff but the the skin sorry and what i'm looking at here i want to know what is going on here if this is in front of the the bed or if, it, if it's coming from off of the bed because if it's coming from off of the bed and i don't think it could be because the angles will need to change because you see what's going on with this line that is going this way this diagonal line Y'all seen that? Because yeah. I'm thinking if, if this diagonal line is going this way, if yes, this sir. if this is a, if this is the fabric that's on the bed, then this fabric is gonna have to flow in that same direction, and I'm not getting that sense. So it seems more like if it's standing up straight. That's true. Yeah. So, Miss Buffy, when you're looking at this, I think that is something that you're gonna have to you're gonna have to work out. You're gonna have to be more definite in the way you are utilizing your 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 images to to express an idea because when we look at this pencil section here in the sketch right here it definitely seems to be something to do with a bed and you can see the pillows and that kind of stuff but to to say because I'm, I'm not sure what is the thought process in terms of what you were thinking if you were thinking just like Manofa, where you want to use it still either you want to use it in a way where it becomes a metaphor for something else but if it's going to become a metaphor for something else, then you be including so that the viewers can really 
um, appreciate the message that you, you, you're seeking. That's, that's one of the things that I want. I, I definitely noticed not only in this year, but some of the other sketches I would have seen are submitting that things could be a whole lot more clear in terms of um, the way they're expressed. So I'm happy that you raised that point, um, Roberto. Vanessa and... Sir, um, I have agreed with everything that Roberto said um, in terms of identifying the objects and how clear it is. It's like you can't really say exactly what is what and what is the whole story behind it. Like you said, if it's a conceptual piece or just a still life. I don't know the difference. I can't even recognize most of the stuff that's in the painting. Minerva? I'm just looking at the work and uh, like everybody else say, you can't really recognize the objects in the painting because I'm kind of like guessing my way through. I feel like the final sketch is somewhat... Uh, I feel like this sketch here is a more better sketch than the final one because... In this sketch, at least you could identify the objects. Yeah, it's the true. Objects, like Roberto said. But in the final sketch, I guess the colors there is what confuse you because you cannot see much of the forms coming out in this one. And maybe I would say the brush strokes is kind of confusing also. There's not much texture. Well, you can't see the difference between the texture. Yes, yeah, sir, that's all. I, I think one of the things that we need to appreciate when it comes to um, working with sketches is how important they are. Even though put a whole lot of detail in them, they are still important because what they do, they, they guide the process of expression. And it's important for, for us to pay attention to those factors when we are when we're doing preparation sketches. And because now we're dealing with the online format of doing things, before we might have taken that for granted. Now we can't take that for granted because remember now, when I'm grading you, I'm gonna grade what you what you present to me in terms of what is online. So if you if you if you took a poor photograph and the colors get distorted, then I gotta grade the distorted colors because I don't know what the real thing look like. And if if you you didn't take the time to read the important aspects of the idea on developing the sketch, then that's what we're going to see. And therefore, it's important group that we that these things are important. And when you don't give them the time and attention that is required, it takes work. And we need to be a much be a whole lot more serious when it comes to our sketches and the ideas that we're seeking uh, to develop. And I hope that what you have taken, one of the things that I would have taken from this session is because of the fact that we have more persons on and there's more interaction, there would have been more ideas, more. We're all here at the same time and we're discussing and we're seeing things and we're sharing our views. When I'm here alone, I could work and I just give my opinion. And, and, and that's value we got out of this session by you being here. It's not something that we're going to do regularly because I know because of time and so on. And of course, we see some of the issues that we had with the technology. But definitely, I would from now on I would strive to see if we can get this done at least once every two weeks a group. Or at least when we have the, the completion of these major assignments, it will be of so much more benefit to all of us because there are things 
And when we put all of that together as a group, it is so much more beneficial for all of us. So I want to thank you all um, for being here and making the time. I really appreciate it. It was more enriching. The last time was just me and Alyssa alone, and it felt so um, lonely. But to have the addition to the group, it's a pity. Antini might be having some issues with his device, but he's here, and I'm hope hopefully he's hearing. But for the others who would have missed, I would urge you to be present next, and that would be um, Ms. Bovell. And I don't know what is happening with, what's his name? John and Janelle and Lenisha. Those are the three who would have been missing this afternoon. So I want to thank you. I don't know if there's any final thoughts you want to leave before we wrap up. So I leave the microphone open at your end for you to make any final statement in terms of anything that you would have noticed, anything that you want to see for us to improve so that next time when we meet, it can be so much more beneficial to all of us. The mic is open. I, I don't have anything else to add, but I do agree that um, these sessions are beneficial to us. It's helpful to hear from others and like bounce ideas off of each other rather than working in isolation in a bubble. It's true. Minerva. Yeah, that's true. Um, at least now I'm sure. Uh, at least now I'm sure that I could go ahead and correct some things on my painting. And you guys have brought to my attention things that I wasn't seeing. And I guess now I could go on with my painting. So thank you. A, a couple of things I want to leave with you before we go. Remember the virtual exhibition. And what is it? You're gonna, what is it, sir? I'm I'm gonna have to I'm gonna work it out and put a date on. And remember, for the virtual exhibition, you're gonna need to have a, a an audio, uh, recording of you talking about your experiences and your work. Anything that you wanna you wanna add to the work that you're submitting, that's gonna be you have to present that in an audio format. Um, the other stuff is on um. The, the stream in terms of the stuff you need to submit in terms of the mention and the kind of stuff. Uh, one other thing um, that I need to talk about. And I hope you would have recognized that I would have talked about the on-time submission of assignments. Now, I know sometimes things might be a little thing, but you got to at least say something to me. Because if you don't say something to me, you can't expect me to be lenient. And I want us to keep up with the assignments that are coming because I would have posted some stuff on abstraction. The next assignment is going to be based on abstraction. So every time you really um, get delinquent with an assignment, when the others come, it's just going to be more tricky for you. And I don't want it to happen because at the end of the, the semester, I want us to have a, a solid body of work and not just in terms of number, but a solid body of work in terms of quality and not just quality, but a solid body of work that when you, you can speak about it. And when persons there, you speak about it, they'll understand that you know where you're coming from. And so far, I, um, I really appreciate the direction in which you're going. There's a lot more that we need to get done. There's a lot more studying and a lot more researching that we need to get done. I don't want you all to sleep on this thing. If you want to achieve mastery, you got to put in the work that is required for mastery. And I know that you are all capable of, of, of mastering the mediums that you're working with. If you take the time and effort to put in the, the work, and if we continue to have healthy discussions like these, there's no way we cannot produce solid pieces of work come um, the end of the semester and have a large body of work that you yourself can be pleased with in terms of how you have progressed and developed towards um, establishing a language of your own. So I want to thank you once again for being here. Enjoy the rest of your day. And I'll keep you posted the next time we have the stream. Please remember to finish up all of those outstanding pieces so that it could be submitted to be graded and assessed. And okay. Minerva, you're going to need to submit some of those. You're going to need to submit photos of those um, pieces to the stream, please. Because the video is good, but it's, 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 it's um, in terms of when we want to zoom in and see certain things, they, we're going to still need to have the, have the um, photos as part of the contribution. Okay? Okay, so I'll have those submitted. All right. Thank you.
So have a good one, folks. Mm -hmm.